Doctor Who Short Trip, The Dream Catcher, written and performed by Alex Robertson. But I don't want to go to bed. The monsters will get me. Those are just nightmares. They can't hurt you. They're just bad dreams. Nothing more. Regan's mother had been through this conversation with her young son several times over the last few nights and for the seventh time that evening. Why do you have to go out anyway? Regan pouted. It's just a work meeting. I'll be back in a couple of hours. Besides, the sitter will look after you, his mother soothed. Now get into bed like a good boy and I'll see you in the morning. Regan's mother kissed him gently on the forehead and headed out of the room being sure to leave the hall light on. As Regan lay in his bed, he could hear his mother talking with the sitter. He may try and stay up later, but just send him back to bed. He'll be fine. Yes, yes, yes. Now, you said he'd been having nightmare trouble lately. The sitter's voice interrupted. Yes, but I guess every child goes through this sort of thing. The mother brushed off the question. Hmm, I guess you're right. The sitter sighed. There was the sound of the front door opening and closing, the sound of footsteps as the sitter went elsewhere in the house, then silence. Regan stared at his ceiling, doing his utmost to stay awake. He truly feared what frightening imagery sleep may present him. However, the more he tried to stay awake, the heavier his eyes felt, and soon enough, Regan fell asleep. Regan sat bolt upright, his eyes wide, his body trembling. He scanned his room, but everything appeared normal. The hallway emitting that warm orange glow of comforting light towards him. A shadow appeared on the wall opposite him. It grew closer and larger, the object casting it drawing nearer. Regan watched it fearfully and was just about to dive under the covers when a round, friendly face poked his head around the corner. Regan! Having some nightmare trouble, are we? It was the sitter. Regan nodded. Ah! Nothing to be ashamed of. The sitter sauntered into the room and surveyed its contents with mild curiosity before turning his gaze fully on Regan with an intense but welcoming stare. Regan held the gaze for a few moments before speaking. Uh, mister? Are you really a sitter? I'm a great many things. A sitter, a stander, a traveller, champion spoon player. You can't play spoons, Regan said, starting to calm down from his fright. You can indeed. I'll demonstrate later, but for now you can stop calling me mister. It's doctor. Regan looked at the doctor quizzically. A doctor? I'm not sick, am I? Not that I'm aware of. There was a moment of silence as the doctor's eyes surveyed the bedroom once more and then back to the young boy in the bed. Regan, do you like bedtime stories? Regan shrugged. The doctor sat down. Once upon a time, there was a creature, a monster, who became so ferocious and so fear-inducing that its very image could scare anyone who saw it. It travelled near and far, scaring every man, woman, child and animal. Then one day, this creature found itself in front of a mirror and was so terrified of its own image that it ran away, never to be seen again. The end. Regan paused thoughtfully for a second, then looked up at the doctor. Where did the creature come from? he asked. Oh, far, far away. From outer space? Maybe. Another pause. That was a lame story. The doctor laughed a short, solitary laugh. Ha! Is that so? Well, next time you can tell me one. What if I have another nightmare? It'll just be another dream and won't hurt you. Regan shuffled down in his bed. The doctor stood up, winked and left the room muttering, I won't let it hurt you to himself. It was a strange tale, Regan thought, especially for a children's bedtime story. 
He then wondered why his mother had hired this sit instead of calling his auntie Mel like normal. He disregarded the thought, then after one more cautious scan of his room, eyes prying the shadows for any sign of a scary creature, finding nothing, Regan drifted back to sleep. Dark shapes, glowing red eyes and fiery maws assaulted the young boy's vision and once again he jolted awake, his body pumping with adrenaline. He blinked rapidly for a moment as his consciousness ripped itself back into a waking reality. The doctor was already in the room, an intense expression on his face which immediately lightened upon seeing Regan awake. Another nightmare? I told you I'd have another one. I told you. Hmm. I won't go back to sleep. I won't. You can't make me. Oh, Regan. I very much so could if I wanted to. But no matter how scary, Regan interrupted. You're just saying that to shut me up, like Mum does, like Auntie Mel does. The doctor's light expression shifted into a serious one. You want to know how to defeat nightmares? Regan nodded. All you have to do is let the nightmare happen. Let it wake you up. Don't fight it. Your mind might be asleep, but your body is still active, and the adrenaline rush will snap you awake, like you did just then. How will that help? Not sure, but at any rate, it'll all be over sooner. The doctor started back out of the room again. Oh, and remember that little story I told you. And with that, he disappeared down the hall again. Regan was tempted to follow the strange sitter, but thought better of it. What would his mother say if she caught him up this late? Thus, he committed himself back to sleep, unaware of a small recording device the doctor had left in the room. Pant, 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 stumble, trip. Regan fell over, frantically picked himself up and continued running, stealing a glance behind him. A dark, shadowy shape pursued him with vigorous intent, and as he watched, its form shifted into multiple shapes. A giant dog, the school caretaker, a large skull with spider's legs, an array of nightmare sights. Its mouth hung open through each of its forms, seemingly interested in eating him. Regan tripped again and fell flat on his face. He cried out, at least. His mouth made the motion to, but no sound emerged. The creature was upon him, and Regan froze in fear, staring up at it as it leered over him. Its form shifted again, now sporting a hazy image of the doctor's round face, and the earlier conversation ran through his mind. Don't fight it. Regan caught his breath, swallowing hard, his fear briefly abated by the friendly face of the doctor. The face disappeared, and was quickly replaced by a snarling goblin-like head but it suddenly seemed less malevolent than the earlier forms, and somehow anxious, scared. Deep breath, deep breath. Relax. The monster above him snarled and lunged, and all went black. Regan sat up in bed, his throat dry, his chest felt heavy, sore, as if something had been sitting upon it. His eyes focused on his bedroom, and he gasped. At the end of his bed was the goblin form he had seen in his nightmare, and caught in its grasp was the doctor, the goblin's gnarled hand squeezing upon his throat. The doctor was gasping for air, but his eyes flicked upon Regan, and a smile crept on his face. The creature looked over, and upon seeing Regan awake, dropped the doctor and made for the child. Run, Regan! the doctor cried. Regan leapt out of bed, dashed out through his door, and made for the nearest room, the bathroom. The creature followed, sniffing and snarling. It slowly entered the bathroom and spied its prey, curled into a corner of the room. Further forward it had advanced, then another fawn caught its eyes. Looking up, the creature yelped and cowered, desperately flailing and falling away from what it saw, but it was too late. Its form flickered with an ember glow and then disappeared with a soft crackle. Regan stood up from his corner as the doctor marched in. What just happened? Regan asked. The doctor smirked and pointed at the bathroom mirror. 
That creature is called Amara. It's what nightmares are named after, and you, Regan, just defeated it. But how? Remember the story I told you. It saw its own image and terrified itself. One of the only known ways to defeat such creatures. I'm trying to find others, but this worked. Just as well you lured us in here. Regan found himself speechless, his heart thumping. Hmm, the Mara. A few folklores have written about it. A demonic creature that sits upon the sleeping forms of its victims, giving them bad dreams. Scary stuff, but you handled yourself quite brilliantly, Regan. A rattle of keys came from down the hall, and the front door opened. Regan's mum was home. The doctor glanced at Regan. If you want to run back to bed, I'll distract her. The doctor wandered out of the room and greeted Regan's mother. Have a good meeting. Yes, uh, thank you. Everything okay here? Oh, of course. Absolutely fine. I'll just collect my things and head out. Regan tucked himself back into bed and called out softly. Doctor? The doctor stopped in his doorway. Yes? Do adults get nightmares too? Those things, that the Mara. Do adults get them? Sometimes, but not often. Though that may be because adults subconsciously learn how to deal with them. Why do you think most adults have mirrors in their bedroom, hmm? Though I imagine you'll be safe for now. You scared us off. Well done, Regan. The doctor winked and headed for the door, subtly picking up his device on the way out. Regan thought for a long while before falling back to sleep. He heard his mother prepare herself for bed and then saw the hall light go out. And somehow he felt that, though the doctor had left, he would return if ever the need arose.